Thank God this is over. I'm rendering out the huge vlog right now. But if you've been following my vlog channel, you know I've been trying to do a 24 hour straight vlog for a while now. And literally as I would wake up, I would hit the record button and do not cut the camera for 24, uh, excuse me, 24 hours straight. And uh, we did it, 24 hours straight. <laughs> We did have one technical issue, which was at 13 hours and one minute in, the camera cut itself. Okay, I don't know when this happened. No. It cut. I don't know when. It stopped? At some point, it, it cut, must have cut. Why? I have no idea. But I just checked and it said standby. So my theory is that the Sony a6600 actually does have a record time limit at 13 hours, or maybe it's 13 hours and one minute. All right, so here's the exact setup that I was using. Uh, we're just about to hit 13 hours, so I'm not gonna touch the camera, and let's see if it cuts. And we're still good. Okay, so it might be 13 hours and one minute, because that's exactly how long my clip was when it cut. So let's do a super quick time lapse. Three. Two, one. Oh my God, okay, yeah, it did. Oh, okay, so that is why this camera cut. 13 hours and one minute is the record limit for the A6600. At first I thought maybe it's a file size limit. So I tried the test again in 4K at a much higher bit rate to see if it fills up the memory card. And yeah, it just filled up the whole 256 gig SD card. So I don't think it's the file size that matters, it's the length and 13 hours and one minute is that limit. And after that, I kind of died inside a little bit. I, mean, I was like, I really want this to be 24 hours, completely straight, no cuts, no edits, nothing. And now there's gonna be a five minute gap in there, so. Mm. Another technical challenge was Adobe Premiere. If you put over 24 hours of footage into the timeline, it really acts really strange and it kind of locks everything up. But I was able to make it work anyways because I just really wanted the whole video to be exactly 24 hours. I wanted the title and thumbnail to be like 24 hours straight vlog. And then people click on the video and see that the video itself is exactly 24 hours long. I mean, that was kind of what I had envisioned. So I render out the 24 hour video, try to upload upload it. Turns out you can't upload 24 hour videos to YouTube anymore. You used to be able to, not anymore. My whole plan just, just crumbled. So I was like, okay, maybe I can just split up the video into two halves and put two pieces. But then when I actually broke up the clips into two halves, the second half of the video is just essentially a sleeping for eight out of the 12 hours. So it wasn't very interesting. And after like thinking about it a couple of times, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to upload the first 12 hours and Make it a 12 hour straight vlog. <laughs> What's up, Sam? What up? Whoa, <laughs> my God. Look at that head. Well, I got a slightly different haircut, but you really hey. have a haircut. Chris will say that I look like this guy. <laughs> Let's go take a look at the footage. For me, it felt like it started off very easy and it got progressively harder throughout the day. It's hard to just be like, oh, we can't cut the camera. I was actually, really exhausted by the end of the day. The goal was to try to just set the camera there and forget about it. It's really hard to do that. Yeah. I thought, hey, if I put the camera there for 24 hours, at some point, I'll forget about it. That did not happen at all. 24 hours straight, I was very conscious of the camera being there. I was constantly trying to figure out how to make it more entertaining. I was like, what's the camera pointed at? Is it in focus? So throughout the day, we probably captured more interesting things than we have ever done in a single day before. If we were to cut this down, this would probably still be like a two, three hour vlog, you know? Yeah. Cause there's that much interesting stuff in there. But by the end of it, I was so done with the vlog. I was so <laughs> ready to cut it. It was such a relief to cut that camera and just be like, I'm not on camera anymore. Oh, it didn't really go as planned because originally I was thinking, oh, I can just let it roll, let it sit there and forget about it. Much 
easier said than done, especially when you know, it's like, there's a bunch of people watching, you know? And first half of the day was pretty basic stuff. I was just setting up a thumbnail, uploading a video, pretty boring stuff. I was just kind of waiting for the day to get started. And I think this is around the time you came. This whole bounce house segment was pretty fun. Honestly, like the best thing about vlogging 24 hours is you actually do more interesting things when you vlog than when you don't. So in a way, it makes your own life more interesting. Honestly, if we weren't doing this 24 hour vlog, I would have been like, eh, I might just stay in and just chill. But because we decided, oh, we're doing this 24 hour vlog, let's make it interesting. We kind of like went outside and did stuff. So that was really fun. I've never had a bouncy house experience before my childhood was not nearly as exciting as yours apparently <laughs> but they're fun man i grew up with a trampoline and it's like different like with a trampoline you could jump really really high which is super fun but it's also really dangerous i've gotten wrecked on the trampoline so many times i got the wind knocked out of me to the point where i can't <laughs> breathe i'm like ah, i like that do you think there's grown adults that you know don't have kids or anything but they're like you know what this is gonna be my workout so i'm gonna get a bouncy house <laughs> and then you could do awesome backflips like that <laughs> <laughs> i mean they sell something in costco but don't buy those because those are specifically made for kids these are legit that these are very strong material and that's why they withstanded me, you, and Jonathan on it. <laughs> also, when me and Jonathan you, started wrestling. Yeah, that was funny. Your inner wrestlers just, just came out so hard. Just, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> After we got exhausted there, we did the haircutting experience. Jonathan's was wild for like 30 seconds, and then everyone was like, oh yeah, I can see you wearing that. I can't believe Jonathan was down to let you do Do you think he still has that beard? He took it to work today. He did? Yeah. <gasps> I love how me and Jonathan are bro both shirtless. Man, you should have just left that mohawk. No. And then Frank was in charge of cutting my hair and he just like was like, I'll make you look good. I'm like, perfect. Yeah. I was expecting to have like half my head shaved or something really wacky. Cause you guys were doing some wacky stuff. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm next. And then he just cut it real nice. I'm like, oh, perfect. Another thing I learned from doing this 24 hour vlog was that if you're kind of on your own and you're kind of trying to force vlog content, mm -hmm. it becomes really hard. You run out of stuff quickly. But then just by having a couple people over, like Frank, you, Jonathan, Leslie, and all of us together, like the vlog stuff comes naturally. Like you record and it just let it unfold in front of you, opposed to you trying to be like, okay, I'm vlogging now, you know? So it's almost like a part of it that's more natural. <laughs> I like that. So apparently egg whites can be used as extreme hair gel. Yeah. Right, so. So we got some of your eggs, but we didn't want to get rid of the yolk. So what did I do? I Rocky Balboa'd it and took a shot of the yolk. And then I made Jonathan try it with me. Do you know what salmonella is? No. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at Jonathan's reaction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he almost threw up. He almost oh, threw up. God. Is it that gross? It's like you're swallowing a loogie, a giant loogie. <laughs> Sounds disgusting. So you having a mohawk is a perfect example of like things you do when you're vlogging. Cause like if it was just us hanging out, that probably wouldn't have been the first thing to come to mind. Actually, that actually does sound like something we would do <laughs> even if the cameras weren't recording. It's not like you force it, but it happens more often. Like more interesting things happen more often when your mindset is in the vlog mode, I feel like. Like some people's styles is to, you know, really plan and know exactly what you're gonna record as soon as you hit the record button. But sometimes I like to hit the record button without knowing and let things play out. You know, when you do that, you're kind of gambling a little bit. Like you might get something really cool and funny that happened organically, or it might just be a bad take that's just like 20 minutes of nothing interesting happening. Yeah, because- happens all the time. Because reality is stranger than fiction. And then of course we decided, oh, let's go over to Santa Monica, let's hang out on the beaches. At a point, this is when I started to think, oh, okay, this is, not entertaining, like at least when I was there. But watching it back, it's like, oh, it, it feels pretty real. So this is part of the reasons why it was fun to just have everyone there. Like David Dobrik, right? He He's always with his whole his Vox squad, was yeah. it? I feel like he's always capturing interesting things because he's with a group of people. 
uh, opposed to just, you know, by himself. I like how my mohawk really went with my outfit that day. It did, yeah. <laughs> you look like you would carry around an electric guitar with you everywhere. Oh, you got the corn. With Cheeto dust on it. It's a good thing you're on a diet. Yes. Let's not look back in the past, only the future. <laughs> See, look at you, you're worse. You got hey, a hot let's, dog. Let's, let's skip over this part here. Okay, so we're about seven hours in here, and this is where my first wave of exhaustion really, really blasted me. If I was just carrying it down here by my side, it would have been no problem, but literally holding the camera like this and the battery pack with the camera as well as the microphone, it was just You're like- You're basically holding like five pounds at all times. Yeah, it's just like holding this all day got pretty exhausting. But look at these muscles now. <laughs> you have really nice soft hands, by the way. I lotion you, up a lot. You, uh, butter. <laughs> I am posting the 12 hour vlog on my secondary channel, which is the vlog channel. And I'll link that down below. After I realized there was a 12 hour time limit, I did make, I think two cuts in here. One is a very short cut, just because it was the cut that you had suggested I make. Oh, okay. It's one of those things where it's not offensive or anything like that, but then I was looking at one of the clips and Sam had mentioned, it's like, ooh, if someone just saw this one scene or someone extracted this one shot and uploaded it, I, it could come off as being really offensive, but it wasn't, but just to be safe, so. Yeah. What's cool about Santa Monica and Venice is like, there's always kind of interesting things to do. It's one of those places where you can just stroll down and it's interesting to sightsee. One of the reasons why I thought this might be kind of cool is because I always thought like, okay, I know what really cool B-roll looks like in all these places, like Dubai and mm -hmm. Bali and all these places. Like I know how epic it can look. But I thought it'd be kind of interesting to just, you know, have one person with an ultra wide angle camera and just like walk through the town. I just love seeing, you know, the people that are there, the types of shops, the shop owners, what's it sound like, what's it feel like. If it was like a 30 minute video of someone just walking through a random city, like far away, I'd be curious to see that. Like what's yeah. it actually like to walk through there? When I was in film school, I saw like an example, like in the 1920s, they just put it in New York and then just let it roll. And you see what people were like in the 1920s, totally completely different from today. Yeah. But in some ways, very similar. And it's just, just a, a, a basically like a piece of history. Like that's pretty genius, really. And, and the thing is like with this video clip of us just walking through Santa Monica, it has no real significance here. Like anyone can really go to Santa Monica and, and get that shot. But as it gets older and older, I think like footage that's just raw, unedited like this might be more interesting like 20 years from now. You go, oh yeah, remember when those shoes were popular? Oh, remember when everyone wore pretty tight pants and I remember or like, you know I remember when that guy in the purple shirt was like being a total ding dong <laughs> oh yeah frank went in there and he's a photographer so he was there taking pictures the guy went up to him and usually they go sorry no pictures but the guy went up to frank he was being a total smart ass about it it was yeah. like you know you could go to lakma and frank was like oh yeah yeah no but you know i'm here so he's like no lakma is in hollywood so why don't you go there instead of taking pictures here and it's like what what a yeah. douchey way to do that. I was gonna buy a hat and I was gonna buy Jonathan a hat and I think Carrie was gonna buy a hat too. Yeah. We were all gonna buy hats. We were actually gonna buy hats, but because he made that one comment, we were like, okay, let's get out of here. You're not gonna get any of our money. I don't know, was he having a bad day or does he just hate photographers? Well, Dude. he kept like saying under his breath, like, oh, I hate that these people come and take pictures, but they never buy anything. I was like, well, maybe if you keep giving them the attitude, they're never gonna buy anything, man. Like nothing good comes out of talking to people with disrespect. Anyways, we're supposed to be talking about the 24 hour vlog. <laughs> okay, and then we sit down for lunch. At this point, eight hours in, I was burnt out. Well, you also ate a burrito that was the size of a small child. <laughs> yeah, only <laughs> half of it. And I thought, hey, maybe since I'm, you know, feeling kind of dry, maybe I can have a, a like a cocktail, and maybe that'll kind of like boost me back up. It did the opposite. It, it made me want to fall asleep. This is about ten hours in. My brain was just fried. I felt like because of mentally being aware of the camera for so long. And this is where I was like, man, I really just want this to be over. And then we finally come back to my place. We're about 12 hours in. And then we start pulling out the gear. So of course we all start nerding out about different camera gear, what, what kind of setup everyone's using. And of course we start unboxing some lighting stuff and Raphael's a gaffer. So of course he's like, oh, he wants to see all the lighting stuff. And okay, here's another thing I also noticed is while we were recording, there was a whole bunch of stuff where in my head while I was recording, I'm like, this is so 
dull and bland. There's nothing interesting about it at all. But going back and watching it, it's interesting because there's like, oh, that's a funny line. That's a funny line. <laughs> that's an interesting moment. You know, that's yeah. cool to look at. And then you realize like, oh, even though nothing really happened, if you just extract 20 seconds out of the 14 minutes of footage, you could actually have a pretty cool 20 seconds. So there is definitely benefits of letting the camera roll. It's just gonna be a whole lot of time editing it because you have a ton of footage to sort through. We had some pretty interesting conversations there. Like Frank was talking about uh, what he wants in a camera as a professional photographer. And I felt like he had some valid points. One of the things he said is like, man, it'd be cool if we had a couple different shutter buttons, but whenever you hit the different shutter, it switches to a different setting. So instead of going through and changing modes, you just hit the shutter and then you want to get a different shot you just there's like another trigger right next to it and you can switch between two or three even at this point where we were all chilling by the couch it almost turned into like podcast format i feel like here maybe we actually did start to forget about the camera a little bit and we all just talked which was nice this part i kind of enjoyed and then of course uh shower was a little bit awkward well it's not that awkward i'm very comfortable with my body should i say <laughs> i'm butt naked hit it on why do you look so uncomfortable? <sighs> now that was an advertiser friendly shower. And then just eight hours of me sleeping. I left the TV and lamp on specifically because like for the video, I usually like to sleep in the dark, but I just want a little bit of lighting for this part. And I wake up morning routine of the next day. This part is just us talking about how we never want to do this again, <laughs> ever. <laughs> like it was a fun, interesting challenge but never again 24 hours. I don't know if stress is the right word, but the exhaustion. Yeah, because I mean, for me, the, the thing that was hard for me was just using a lot of my brain power just to really watch what I say and try not to cuss because I cuss a lot. And yeah, I the did thing it. is you can cuss, that, that was fine. Yeah. I wanted things to be natural, but you also start to realize that you don't want to say stuff when too many people are listening. Things get taken out of context so much and you never know what could come back and bite you. You know, sometimes people will say or do something in a completely innocent way and it gets twisted. And then all of a sudden you look like a really crappy person. Like I feel like I'm generally PC, but yeah. you know, there's also, there's always that thing where you're thinking extra hard because it's like, even if I know I'm being innocent, Am I saying something that people can take out of context? You can see how good I'm sleeping right there. <laughs> oh my God, I've never really watched myself Why sleep. Why don't you this have creepy. pillowcases? Oh man, that's I freaking did, me out. I did not, I, I, <laughs> I have a pillowcase. I don't know why it's not on right now. Would you ever do a 12 hour vlog on your own? No. No. <laughs> how about an eight hour vlog on your own? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. 20 minutes. 20 minutes, yes. That is one thing I want to challenge everybody to do. I wouldn't say do it for entertainment purposes because if you start recording right now, it's not gonna be the most entertaining thing ever, but for your own records, I think it'd be really cool if you literally grab your phone or your whatever camera you have nearby and literally right now hit the record button and then don't cut it for 20 to 30 minutes. I did that a couple times in the past and I recorded like my, one of my buddies, Michael, right before he was about to have a kid. And it was for 30 minutes. We were just eating pizza, drinking beers, and I was just asking him questions. Very mundane questions. But when we look back on it now, it's so interesting because like I have footage of him going like, I think I'm gonna have a girl, but then I has a boy. You know, it's like, it's interesting <laughs> to just remember like, what was your mindset like back then? The thing that happens with old videos is that sometimes you lose them, you leave them on a hard drive, your computer gets fried. So what I've been doing is I've been uploading these 20, 30 minute videos to YouTube as an unlisted or private video, because it's videos that I don't really care to share with everybody, but I just want to share it with myself and the people that were there. You guys should just yeah. do it right now. You guys should do, you it, guys right should do it right now. now. Just pull out your phone, just just do it. It's so easy to light the fuse. But then now I started the clip. And now, now once you go a minute in, you go, all right, yeah. I'm already a minute into this thing. My hope is that most of you are no longer watching this video. My hope is that you guys are just pulled out your phone right now. And you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna go wander around, go yeah. uh, film the building you're in. 
go show us that what's outside of the building, who's nearby, go ask them a few questions, tell them hello. And then they'll probably be like, oh my God, why are you filming me, you creep? <laughs> but that's okay, that's part of the video, it'd be funny. But like going into it with the mindset of, I cannot cut this. 24 minute challenge, let's do that. And if you start recording for 24 minutes straight and upload that to you know, your YouTube channel, let us know in the comments of this video, say, I did it. And then also tell us where you live, like not, not your address, what city or country or anything. Like I'd be interested to yeah. see that. I'm telling you though, when you finish the 24 minute clip, you will come out of it and go, oh, that was really boring. I don't want to share that. But that's, that's exactly how I feel all the time. What seems like a very deletable, insignificant video now can end up being quite awesome in the future. Also, if you have any old relatives or know old people, go and talk to them. They have the craziest stories that will blow your mind. Now, one last thing that this 24 hour vlog has reminded me is that I used to hate being on camera. Any photos or videos that was taken of me in it, I, I would always be like, Ugh, can you delete that please? And I feel like I've finally gotten comfortable enough to where I can feel pretty natural and decent in front of the camera. That's really because I've done it so much. And I always felt like I was kind of a mumbler and some of that came out during the 24 hour vlogs. I guess when I'm just talking to friends, sometimes I don't enunciate as well as I do when and I'm on camera. So because of those reasons, I would have never thought in a million years would I have a job where I talk to a camera. And I cringed so hard when I watched some of my earlier videos because I could tell that I wasn't just super comfortable for the camera yet. I was kind of stiff. I'm not robotic. Uh. <laughs> but it definitely took some work. I'm definitely not naturally the most smoothest, most articulate speaker out there. So even if you're not the most confident, comfortable person, you never know where you might end up with the YouTube world and all that. But more importantly, check out this organizer. It's a cable organizer. I have this one drawer in here, which is exactly why I'm sitting on the ground. And it is a nightmare of a drawer. I literally just took all my spare cables and just threw it in here. It just keeps going. Like it, it, there is no bottom to this thing. I just want to have maybe three of each cable and then just throw out the rest. Cause I just, there's too many. Now during the 24 hour vlog, I was supposed to read a whole bunch of comments, but I just never got around to it. So I'm going to read the comments from my vlog channel right now. M Isa says, Hey, that's the exact same cable organizer that I have. Dude, this thing is gonna be cool. It's still gonna be a disaster once I put a bunch of cables in here, but at least when I zip it up, it's just like feels nice and clean. Any plans on a trip to Brazil? I live here and would love to see you. I would love to go to Brazil. You know, I actually realized that I've never been south of the equator. In a month from now, I'll actually be in Bali. So that'll be my first time south of the border. Anywhere in South America, I would love to go visit. I know you're just testing the Sony, but as of right now, would you rather daily vlog in the future with a Sony or Canon? For me, still Canon. This EOS are so good. And the Sonys are great vlogging cameras too. They got good dynamic range, they're nice and sharp, but I just personally really like the look of Canon. So I actually got another Canon vlogging setup. It should be arriving maybe today. So I don't know, that'd be a future video. Going through this and organizing, I realized I have like a hundred of these cables that I don't need. I get it every time I buy a hard drive. And the number of hard drives I have, it's its own little disaster. That's a problem for another day. So I got all my main cables here and then I got my USB-C cables here. So USB-C to Lightning, USB-C to USB-C, USB-C to Mini. And then I'm just gonna put my kind of weird random cables here. Timo says, hey Gene, which cable organizer did you buy? I'm looking for a decent one. Throw a link in the description if you're looking to pick one up. I just got it on Amazon. I think it was like eight bucks or something like that. Look at that. It's beautiful. It's so contained and it doesn't look like a disaster. At least until you open it back up. You're like, oh, close it. Is it just me or Gene in the end has the t-shirt reversed? Nothing gets past you guys. Yeah, I accidentally wore my own shirt backwards. <laughs> I kind of felt it choking me the whole day and it took me till the end of the day to be like, maybe it is backwards. And yeah, you're right. Anyways, don't forget to tune in next week when we organize all the HDMI cables. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right, see you guys later.